All right, we are now ready to move into phase two, and that means getting a copy of this mesh into the Sculpt workspace to use with the cloth simulation tool. We'll get a result that looks something like this. Now, when we are using the cloth tool, there is an option for select or pick from the Retapa workspace. It's going to look for whatever's visible. So make sure to hide whatever you do not want to simulate. Now, I want to create a pinning object for the collar to hold it in place. So to do that, I'm going to use the select tool. Go to edges mode. I can see my brush is too large. So if I try to select an edge, it's going to be way too large. So I'm going to use my left bracket key to reduce it down. And that bright green is a little bit hard to see. So I'll reduce the opacity. Okay. And yeah, let's shift click to select the entire loop and then faces and come down uh, to the clone tool. I'll hit apply. No. Let's hide the original object. Now with this one, I'll subdivide it one time. Select all faces on the layer. You could also just double click on the polygons and it will select all contiguous faces. But now we want to give it some thickness to create a shell. I think that will suffice for now. Let's hit escape to drop the tool and escape once more. I'm going to subdivide it once again and let's double tap to select all the faces and let's relax it just a little bit. All right. Now I want to get a copy of this into the Sculpt workspace. I'm going to hit escape to drop that selection. What we're going to do is go into the Sculpt workspace and I'm going to create a new layer. Geometry, retypo mesh to Sculpt mesh. What I do is I assign a hotkey to this because I use it fairly often. If you are moving objects back and forth between the Sculpt workspace and the retypo workspace, you can use this option here. Um, and you can also assign hotkeys to the workspace tabs. So for example, if you want to quickly move a mesh from here, you don't have to move your cursor around the interface a lot. You just simply hit your hotkey for the sculpt room, and then I'll hit the hotkey to move that object here. Whatever layer I have selected, that's what it's going to move it to. With the hands, they are in voxel mode. If I were in surface mode and try to search for the cloth tool, I won't find it because it only works on voxel objects, at least as of this recording. So let's select our pinning object, which is in voxel mode. Now, the reason why I want to select a pinning object is because when we run the simulation, there is an option that it's going to cling aggressively or basically freeze the mesh where it intersects the currently selected object, which in this case is the hands. Now I'll go to the cloth tool at the bottom of the object section. The default cloth is what you'll see initially. And it's basically just a planar object like this. But in this case, we want to pick from Retapo. I need to go back to the Retapo workspace, hide that, unhide the upper torso, and I want to extrude it just a little bit using this additional extrusion. And that's going to extrude it away from the skin so it drapes more naturally like a cloth object would. Let's go to the scope workspace, pick from Retapo. Let's subdivide it one time. I want to choose stick to current object. That means whatever I have selected. And gravity is set to one by default and 0.6 for the friction. Cloth thickness only comes into play after you've run simulation and you're ready to apply it to a voxel layer. But this has no part in the simulation itself. So with that done, I'm going to start with a little bit higher value than one. 
because if you go to higher value, the greater the effect gravity has. That just means the faster it's going to simulate. And click start. I can see it already starting to droop here in the armpit region. Let's go to 0.5 and run it again. Let's go to 0.2. And I want to increase my brush size. Right click and drag right. And as it's simulating, I can pull away from the skin like this. So this is a really good mode for creating some folds here along the arm or fixing problematic areas. Okay, that looks fine to me for now for demonstration purposes. If you need to reset it back to the state you had before you began the simulation, you can click that here. You can also reset the gizmo if you need. And you could also reposition it if you need. We are going to send a copy of this into the Retopa workspace. But before I do that, there is one little housekeeping tip. Since we use this mesh, 3D Coat is essentially going to place that object that we just simulated into the very same layer because it shares the same name. What I need to do to work around that is to give this a different name. Now, when I choose to retopo, it's going to send a copy of this to the retopo workspace. So that's our finished result. We're going to go ahead and move on in the next video to actually creating the chainmail pattern on our voxel object. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.